let me tell you a little story about Miss Edith G. She lived in Clairvoyant Terrace at number 83. A slight squint in her left eye. Her lips, they were thin and small. She had narrow sloping shoulders and she had no bust at all. She'd a velvet hat with trimmings and a dark grey serge costume. She lived in Clairvoyant Terrace in a small bed sitting room. She'd a purple mac for wet days, a green umbrella too to take. She'd a bicycle with shop baskets and a harsh back pedal brake. The church of St. Elias was not so very far. She'd a lot of knitting, knitting for the church bazaar. Miss G looked up at the starlight and said, Does anyone care that I live in Clairvoyant Terrace on 100 pounds a year? She dreamed a dream one evening that she was Queen of France and that the Vicar of St. Elias asked Her Majesty to dance. But a storm blew down the palace. She was biking through a field of corn and a bull with the face of the vicar was charging with lowered horns. She could feel his hot breath behind her. He was going to overtake and the bicycle went slower and slower because of the back pedal brake. Summer made the trees a picture, winter made them a wreck. She passed by the loving couples, she turned her head away. She passed by the loving couples and they didn't ask her to stay. Miss G sat down in the side aisle. She heard the organ play and the choir it sang so sweetly at the end of the day. Miss G knelt down in the side aisle. She knelt down on her knees. Lead me not into temptation, but make me a good girl, please. The day and night went by her like waves round a Cornish wreck. She bicycled down to the doctor with her clothes buttoned up to her neck. She bicycled down to the doctor and rang the surgery bell. Oh doctor, I have a pain inside me and I don't feel very well. Dr. Thomas looked her over and then he looked some more. Walk over to his wash basin and said, why didn't you come here before? Dr. Thomas sat over his dinner, though his wife was waiting to ring, rolling his bread into pallets, said cancer's a funny thing. Nobody knows what caused it, though some pretend they do. It's like some hidden assassin waiting to strike you. Childless women get it, and men when they retire. It's as if they had to be some outlet for their foiled creative fire. His wife rang for the servants, said, Don't be so morbid, dear. He said, I saw Miss G this evening. She's a goner, I fear. They took Miss G to the hospital. She lay there a total wreck, lay in the ward for women with their bedclothes right up to their neck. They lay her on the table. The students began to laugh. And Mr. Ross, the surgeon, he cut Miss G in half. Mr. Ross, he turned to the students, said, Gentlemen, if you'd please, we seldom see a sacrama as far as vast as this. They took her off the table. They wheeled her away, Miss G, down to another department where they studied anatomy. They hung her from the ceiling. Yes, they hung up Miss G and a couple of Oxford groupers carefully dissected her knee.